Welcome back. This is part two of finding joy in the midst of crisis. And this section deals with responding in times of crisis and even personal tragedy. And so let me begin by sharing with you a few tragedies in which our families had to decide how to respond. My husband Ed's half brother was shot and killed. Um, we've both had family members addicted to dangerous drugs. Ed's mom has been on life support about seven times, if I counted correctly. Um, Ed's niece was killed in a tragic car accident um, at age 30. Ed has several members who are, of his family who are critically injured in a, um, when their car was hit by a train. And uh, two other little boys in the back seat, unfortunately, did not survive. This past Thanksgiving, I found my mother on the floor. She had been there for several hours. We're not sure how long. Um, and she was not able to get up and she was pretty sick. Um, so that was challenging. And, um, and then a few weeks ago, Ed's mom fell and broke her tibia and her fibia, and it was a compound fracture uh, with the bone breaking through the skin. Um, so of course you had to have emergency surgery on that. Um, then eight days later, when she was at the orthopedic surgeon's office for the follow-up visit, she coded. And um, thankfully the surgeon revived her on the spot with the AED and uh, she was sent over to ICU and then um, had a uh, defibrillator implanted. So um, that was just a few weeks ago. And, and now we just found out that she um, has contracted the COVID-19 virus while in her rehab facility. So that is challenging. Um, also my daughter's mother-in-law has been uh, in a severe battle against the COVID-19 virus uh, for the past several weeks. So um, that has been very, very challenging as well. Um, so these are just some of the difficulties we face as a family. Um, and there are, and will continue to be, I'm sure many more um, that are affected by COVID-19 pandemic. And we could all make lists, I'm sure, of the tragedies and the difficulties that we've had in each of our lives. And it's not about whose list is worse, although I've had some people act like that is what it's about. Um, you know, you don't understand, uh, which is true. No one can understand except God. We talked about that last time. but. It's not about whose list is worse or what we've gone through. It's about how we respond. And um, I just want to talk about that a little bit today. I know this may be controversial, but it's my opinion and my belief that being mad at God is a scary place to be. I believe that to be mad at the only one who can truly understand who can, you know, exact, who can truly understand exactly how we're feeling and the only one who can truly comfort us, I just believe that's a dangerous place to be and that it can even shipwreck our faith. We've seen that. Um, yes, I know David poured out his heart in the Psalms, and so I'm not saying to not be honest about our feelings and our temptations, but you notice how David always came back to the right place. He realized that wasn't a good place for him to be. He was honest about his feelings in the poetry of the Psalms, but that doesn't mean that that's prescriptive for us, that that's something we should do or should feel justified in doing. Um, I don't believe that means it's okay for us to curse God or be mad at him when hardship or tragedy strikes. I've heard it said that God can handle us being angry at him, and yes, he can handle it, but is it right? You know, and I've wrestled with that question myself, and, and um, you know, I think, do we want our children going off on us 
when they're angry. I was discussing this with one of my daughters recently and, and her, I thought, insightful response was, why is it okay to talk to God like that when it's not okay to talk to a fellow human being like that in anger and lashing out? In Isaiah 45, verse 9, look at how this addresses it. Verse 9 and also verses 11 through 12. Woe to those who quarrel with their maker, those who are nothing but potsherds among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say, the potter has no hands? This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and its maker. Concerning things to come, do you question me about my children or give me orders about the work of my hands? It is I who made the earth and created mankind on it. My own hands stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry hosts. Romans 9 verse 20 is along the same lines. But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me like this? And then, of course, we have the book of Job. I want to look at that for a second. Job's wife told him to curse God. And Job's response in chapter 2, verse 10, was Job said, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? This was exactly the way an elder in the Boston church, Wyndham Shaw, responded to his debilitating illness that took his life recently. Someone who was at the memorial told me that this was shared, um, that Wyndham implored his children not to let this affect their faith. And it reminded them that God is a good God. I've heard some say, well, Job got angry and questioned God, so it's okay for me to do so. It's okay for me to be angry at God. But let's look at how God answered Job. Let's look at this discourse. In, in chapter 40 of Job, Job starts to get it. And we're going to look at this in uh, his discourse with God, starting in verse 2. Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. But God sees fit to go on in verse 6. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? God asked him a few more questions. And then he says that if Job can do all these things, God says, then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. And that's in verse 14. Then let's jump over to chapter 42 and start back up in verse 1. And it appears that Job fully gets it. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I do not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. That was Job's response. So let, let's all contemplate Job's response. When we battle with being angry at God. I think the third and final lesson on finding joy in the midst of crisis will be very helpful as we look at the responses of Paul and of Jesus himself to hardship and wrap up our lesson on biblical joy. I hope you'll join me for part three.